Hi hey guys, welcome back to Spoons and Spirits. Uh, so today I am going to show you guys how to carve a pencil. So uh, we're going to carve a wood spirit into the pencil. I've had a few requests for this. Um, so uh, I'm going to try and get as close as I can in uh, to the pencil in a little bit as well so that I can really show you some of those close-up details of the pencil as well as me carving it. Um, you, initial thoughts, you can use any pencil you want. You can use a coloured pencil. You can use a natural wood pencil like this. Um, it's completely up to you, really, what kind of effect you want. Every pencil is slightly different, so give it a go and carve it. Some are a little bit crumbly. Some have a pretty strong wood grain in them. Some do not. Give it a go. Every, every pencil, what have you lost if you've carved it wrong? You just made a hole in the side of a pencil you'll probably never get to the end of. Um, the pencils I am using are Fat Belly Fish ones. Um, I have no idea whether they are a brand new, like a wonderful make or a or, or whatever, but they work really well for me. And they came in a really lovely uh, large pack of uh, six boxes, pretty cheap on Amazon quite a few years ago, and I'm still working my way through them. Um, if you wanted a more written version of this, um, then definitely worth checking out this book, The Complete Starter Guide to Whittling um, from Fox Chapel Publishing. And uh, it is a brilliant one for some beginner's projects, which uh, got me started off with whittling. And this one is actually based on the Santa Pencils uh, by Ron Johnson here. Um, great ones to get started with, but mine have slightly adapted over the years. Very similar technique still, but... Um, I've just done my own little spin on it, which you will um, if you get start off with the basic as well. The more you do something, the more you'll think, ah, that works better. I'm going to give that one a go. Um, tools wise, what I'm going to be using is trusty gloves. As usual, always get lots of questions of these. Black Rock um, Lithium PU, they are uh, a C that's um, fairly high um, or level five, depending on who you're looking at really there. Level five uh, cut resistance. One big thing that's going around a lot because of a lot of new beginners um, coming around the Christmas time that always uh, happens is you get the gory photos all across Facebook and everywhere. These won't protect against sta uh, stabbing. They will not protect you against stabbing. If you stab um, into your glove from something, you're going to end up putting a hole in your hand. Um, they will, however, take the edge off of a slice. They won't entirely. If you've got a really sharp knife, it won't take the full cut out. Um, but it will take the edge off and start put you down to needing glue and stowy strips rather than reattaching a finger. Um, so definitely worth investing. Um, these at the moment retailing for about five pounds here in the UK, um, a set. And then like I've shown you before in previous videos, I'll put a link to, um, somewhere around here, um, uh, of my, uh, cost cutting ideas. Um, always worth you can do one of the things of cutting the fingers off when you start to wear through them cut the fingers off your old set save them take them onto the new set um, works just as well you might look a little bit ragtag but it saves you a bit of money and also saves a finger um, tools i'm going to use this is completely optional using a gouge you don't have to you can use a single knife for the whole thing i'm just using um, the flex uh, flex cut sk um, model there where you can uh, change the the tops on them and everything by pulling them out they're really stiff um which is good because they don't fall everywhere but um fall out everywhere but i'm just using a um 45 degree uh, uh quarter inch 70 degrees sorry um v gauge uh, gouge there and this is just a homemade knife that i decided one day i was going to give it a go and i say by one day it took me nearly a week um knife making is definitely an art and a passion but uh, I made this out of an old saw blade, um, and it's quite flexible. Works really well for um, pencil carving. You can use a flex cut detail knife, uh, such as this. You can use a normal uh, Sheffield steel style knife with the uh, dark brown handles. You just want something with a, a good point on it, um, a nice sharp point. That is a sharp blade, ideally a thin blade, which this is. Obviously, it's come from a, a, ba um, a saw blade. Um, you could just use miniature um, chisels the whole way through, such as dockyard tools do, um, or, or some of the flex, uh, flex cut ones would work well. It's completely up to you. Give it a go with whatever you wanted to do. Um, that's pretty much it, really. Uh, let's get started. 
Okay, so we've got a nice close up here. You can see on this pencil here um, the wood grain on it there, and um, it's always worth noting. But then <sighs> with a pencil, the wood grain's always going to run down. That's how they make them. Um, but uh, it, it's worth just sort of picking because sometimes you'll have it running up, sometimes you'll have it running down, um, sometimes it's quite grainy on one side. So just pick a side. I'm looking at this one here that is looking less grainy than the others there. Okay, and we're just going to start off with a simple V-shaped cut here. So like I've said in previous videos, and like I said in the, um, uh, in the one uh, in the book there, it says about doing a flat straight cut. I prefer to do a slightly angled cut. I find the straight cuts tend to be more of a stern look to them. So all I'm doing is I'm just putting a stop cut in, I'm cutting straight up to it on one side. I'm going to rotate it around and do the other side. You don't have to put too much pressure into it, but just be warned. I know I say in a lot of my other Wood Spirit videos, depth is good, getting it nice and deep. This is where the only one to really watch out for is because you will hit lead and that will start making things black um, or gray, sorry, and uh, it will stain your knife. So that will then get onto everything else as well. Can work out quite nicely when we're putting in a mouth. If you're putting in an open mouth, um, you can push something in there, such as a, as a awl or a braddle, um, whatever you want to call it, uh, basically a sharp pointy thing um, in there to make like a little hole. Um, but uh, that's completely up to you there. So we've made that. Those are the eyes. And then I'm going to measure down to about there just off of where it is the highest there and do the same here. And I'm just gently flattening out that part. Now it's worth noting as well. So I said about tools and things earlier, this is a perfect, uh, uh, perfect project to do with a craft knife um, because they are very flexible. They come pretty sharp to start with and they're really, really thin. So that might be worth, worth a shout as well. Um, so if you're just getting into whittling, that would be a great, this would be a great little thing to do. So all I'm doing here now is putting a couple of lines down for the nose. I'm turning the nose into a triangle there. I'm bringing that up. Okay, so we look at it from there, you can see the triangle nose and sideways, you can see where it's protruding out a little bit there. Okay, and then I'm just going to take those corners off of the nose to give it a more rounded feel to it there. There we are. Okay, I'm just going to take the edge off of the eyes there so it's not quite so heavy browed. And I'm not taking a lot off. This is literally just minuscule amounts. And that's the thing with the pencil carving. It really is teeny tiny amounts there. Um, okay, now I'm going to put the forehead in. So, and they, again, the, what I've said before about um, in my previous videos uh, about um, knowing how much detail to put in, this is a perfect example of less is more. Um, you, The less detail you put in, the better it will look. If you try and squeeze tons and tons of detail into it, it's going to go wrong. It really is. Um, because especially if you're starting out, especially if you're starting out, you might want to think I'm going to put in all of the, um, I'm going to put in all of the, the eyebrows. I'm going to put in every single line on the eye. I'm going to put in every little squint line. Um, on the face here, but uh, it really won't help you at all, um, especially starting out. When you are well, like when you've been carving for years and years and years, um, then yeah, give it a go. But don't be afraid if it goes wrong or looks like too much. Um, just imagine it in a perspective point of view. If you are looking at someone from a distance, you're not going to see every line on that person's face. You're going to see indications of shadow but you're not going to see every single line on that person's face. And it's the same thing with this. Okay, so I've just put a rounded forehead onto it there. This light's looking a little bit bright here. Trying to adjust my light a little. 
Uh, hopefully that's a bit better. Okay. So you notice there, the forehead is in a similar position to the bridge of the nose there. Okay. So now we go down to the beard. Okay. Now, first instance, you automatically think, well, let's put in the mustache. We're not going to do that. We're going to put in the line of where the beard comes up because a person's beard doesn't just stop there. It goes up towards the ears. So we're just going to draw in a little line with our knife as like a small stop cut and you're not trying to go too deep. Okay. I've gone a little bit far over there. So that's going to cause a little issue. And that can happen sometimes. Even when you've done literally hundreds of pencils like this um, and gotten wrong, most of them, you can still make mistakes because every pencil is different. Every carving day is different. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same on this side. Bring it up for you. Okay. The beauty of this being quite a flexible blade is I can give it a little bit more welly to try and get those tiny little bits out because I know it's not going to break, it's not going to chip, and it's not going to pull on the wood and rip it so much. Um, there are plenty of videos on YouTube about making your own knives, um, whether it's through blacksmithing, whether it is through um, just sort of repurposing an old blade like I did. Look them up if you're interested. Um, I am by far not the cleverest person with that sort of thing. It was just a bit of a fun project. I thought I'd give it a go. Right. So we've put in two lines here for the beard. Now, you can see by the side there where it's coming up. And by that side, now we need to think about the beard a little bit. And whether we want to give it a mustache or whether we want to do the illusion of a mustache. Um, I think think I'm going to give a slight mustache into this guy. So what I'm going to do now is just use my knife to draw a small mustache in there. Now you can, there is nothing wrong with using another pencil to draw on it, but just be aware it won't be as thin. So all I'm doing here now is just using the wood to draw my line. Once you've got that line in, you can slowly cut it out. Okay. Turn it upside down again. You might say, why am I turning it upside down? It's for comfort. I do not want to be running a knife towards my hands. Like I said, these gloves aren't stab proof. And I find this, turning it upside down, makes sure that I have better control of the knife. Now, everyone carves a little differently and everyone le learns different techniques, whether it's good techniques or bad techniques. Um, bad habits, good habits. But that's what I do. Um, just remember, wherever your knife is going to end up, that's where you want to know whether it's safe or not. So I've just put in a little V there on the beard. And I'm just gently cutting in. And I haven't gone all the way on that one just yet because I don't want to cut through what I've just done. Okay. And then it's just gently, gently, gently. This is very small, minute work. Um, if you struggle to see what you're doing, I would also highly recommend going to a local pound shop, you know, thrift store, whatever you, whatever you might have um, near you, something cheap. You don't want to overspend. Just get yourself some reading glasses because all they are are magnifying glasses for your eyes. You might look... A little bit silly in some of them, especially if they're from a cheap shop. You might not. Now, because I brought that beard down, I'm going to bring these cheeks down a little bit now because I can see they're protruding way too much for my liking. So it's just going back and readjusting. Okay, also handy having a little nail brush. And just that gentle brushing just to get any little flecks off. So 
now I can see. I need to get more off of there. Now I'm going to cut the beard in a little bit more to the moustache. Okay, now I can see I've gone slightly off on the moustache there and I've got one side a lot longer than the other. I'm just taking that off now. And that can happen with the moustache sometimes. Okay. Right. Okay, let's bring these eyes out a little bit. Okay. And again, back to these teeny tiny minute little cuts. Okay. Just adding a little bit more depth into that there. And by depth, what I'm doing is instead of cutting straight down, I'm cutting in ever so slightly. So that's going to create that view of depth into it, the shadow under his eyes, under the heavy eyebrows, without getting too close to the, the lead in the pencil there. Okay. Okay, right, let's smooth out this beard a little bit. Um, I didn't know to start with as well, starting wise. Um, start on the edge. <laughs> I didn't point that part out. Start on a corner, because then you're going to get the highest part for the nose. Didn't point that out. Really should have done. Um, don't start on a flat. You're just making more work for yourself. Okay. Now I'm just creating less of a steep incline for the hair on his head. So that when we go at it with the gouge in a minute, gauge, what am I talking about? The gouge in a minute, it is not going to look so quite so silly. I think that's about it for him for now. Okay. Well, that's where we are so far. Let's see. Okay. That's where we are. So now I'm going to use the gouge. All right. I'm going to start on the mustache. I'm going to start just gently. Now you're not putting the gouge in the whole way. I'm just literally taking off a little line up to the nose. Okay. And then you can start getting in a little deeper. And you need a lot of control with this. You're not putting force into it. You're putting more effort into the direction of the gouge than you are into it cutting. Okay. This isn't like a big wood spirit. This is a teeny tiny little thing. And now I've ended up with some very straight bits there. So I'm just going to come in and overcut it a little bit to put in some more hairs because... Unless this guy's been at it with the straighteners, that doesn't tend to be how mustaches work. They don't go straight down unless you severely care for them. And this guy's, this guy's been hiding out in the woods for quite some time. He's been hidden under the bits of this pencil for a while now. Okay, that's a little bit better. Okay, now we get the fun part. That's the main hard detail done now we've got the fun part so now we can decide where to go with the hair um and i think i'm going to do a bit of asymmetry here um as in top to bottom and then i think i'm going to have this hairline going that way and i think i'm going to have the beard going that way so i'm going to start coming away from the mustache to the pencil now i'm lifting up as i go i don't want to go into my fingers although i'm putting that little amount of pressure onto it it won't do anything to my fingers if i hit them because i've got my glove on i don't want to risk it and i don't want to start any bad habits okay so all i'm doing now is i'm focusing my eyes on a point around about here okay and that's where i want my hair to go and it doesn't matter 
if you get a little bit of straggly hairs. That's the way the wind works on hair, I'm afraid. And it doesn't matter whether you crisscross over, that's going to help. It's going to make it look a little bit more natural. And what I'm doing here at the bottom is I'm naturally going in a little bit deeper so that it really cuts into that pencil and makes it so that we can really see where it's ending. Okay. See that? Right. Now I'm going to come in at the other way. Being careful not to get under where I've just cut because then you're just going to rip what you've got done already. And I'm just putting in some more lines and getting it a little bit closer to the moustache and to the edges. Doesn't matter if it doesn't come off straight away. We'll go in with our knife in a minute. In fact, no, I'm going to go in with the knife now. And just go in, stop cut it down, and away they come. Okay, and then again, don't forget, we put in those lines for the beard. We're going to make sure that the beard gets up to them. Otherwise, they're there for nothing. Slightly going around the edge. Same on this side. Okay. There we go. Looking good. Now, the hair. I'm going to come down towards it, but I'm going to stop right on that line. It will you will end up putting little V's in the forehead. You really need to make sure you've got that control here. And if you feel like you're losing it, stop before you get that far. Because in a minute, I'm going to show you how I like to finish off my pencils to create that real wow factor with them. And trust me, if you've got lines out of place, it will show them. Okay. So again, like I said, same th sort of thing here. I'm focusing on this corner, this edging now for the hair. Oops. Okay. You don't want to go too deep with the hair on this head. You want that to kind of flow out to the top, not cut in. Don't know why, it just looks better to me. That's what I'm going for anyway. Okay. And then with my knife, I'm just going to run that along the edge of the hairline to create some definition and just to take away any of the fuzzies there. A second. Beautiful. That is pretty much your wood spirit pencil. So unlike other wood spirits, I haven't put in any eyes. I haven't put in any wrinkles. Um, you could put in wrinkles on the forehead. But again, it's kind of that 50-50 really of that if you put them in, you're going across the grain with a very light grain anyway, um, a very loose grain, sorry, on the pencils. So you run a little bit more of a risk of uh, the wood splitting, but also you've got lots of lines in here with the hair. You've got to think, uh, think of that aesthetic thought here. How much is too much? For me, I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it just there, make this a nice, simple little carving. I mean, I say simple, it's very miniature. It takes a bit of practice. The first ones you do will probably look rather blocky and square. It's just down to practice. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take off the gloves. That's enough of the tools. I'm going to take a little bit of sandpaper, and by a little bit, I mean an absolute little bit, really teeny tiny. I mean, you look at that. So that's my fingernail, and then fold it up again and again. And I'm going to use this just over the smooth parts, not over the hair. And I'm just rubbing it gently. I'm not putting anything into this. I'm letting the sandpaper do the work. And that just smooths out your cut lines. You don't have to do this if you want to keep your cut lines in there. 
if you want it to, to show it all off, then go for it. Okay, great little bit for the bottom of the nose as well there, actually. Like you're wiping his nose, like you're wiping, like in that, wiping that drip off of a toddler's nose. Okay, and that will really help to just round it off and give it a little bit more realism. I mean, how realistic can you get? There's a face looking at you from a pencil, but there. Okay. Right, I'm just going to get one more thing to really show off how this can really pop. Okay, so what I've got is coffee. I've done this on one of my other videos before. Um, coffee's great for staining wood. Absolutely great. Obviously, it's food safe. So with pencils, extra benefit because... Uh, you know, you'll always find that one person who sticks the end of the pencil in his mouth. You know, not that uh, a tiny little bit of varnish or whatever would do much to it, but there you go. It, it just gives you that extra bit. And that is just a nice mix of, I've just used instant coffee with a bit of warm water so it dissolves in there properly. You can use uh, coffee grounds. You can use even the beans, really, if you soak them long enough. You could even use an old bit of dribble of coffee if you're having black coffee. Don't use coffee with milk in. I've done that before. And then you come back to a nice, fluffy, horrible, stinking mess um, a week later. Um, obviously, milk curdles and goes horrible. Now, that's this is where um, having a bare, bare wood pencils really comes in. But this will work once you've carved a um, painted pencil. So like a, a red pencil or a green, blue, whatever. It's got the painting on the outside and the wood wood on the inside there. This will work beautifully for that. And all you want to do is just paint it, paint it on. Make sure you get right into those crevices and cracks. If anything, overload the crevices and cracks. Okay, because what that will do is really help to make those little bits pop. And don't forget to get the whole pencil, every last bit of it. Obviously, when you start sharpening the pencil, you're not it's not going to show, but you'll always have an outside of it there somewhere. And look at the difference that that has made. Okay. Wood chip stuck to it. Look at that difference straight away. You can see all those details in there much better. But look at the difference here. When I hold it up straight, really close up, there's very little that's actually gone into that. Very little cuts. But when you hold it back and you let the light get to it, what a difference. What a difference indeed. Right. And that is it. That's a simple, simple, simple wood spirit pencil. Great for gifts, for family, friends, the random person who's wondering what you're doing in the park uh, with a knife, uh, carving a piece of wood, whatever. Um, they're great little things to give away. Great little things to have around the house for a little conversation starter. Um, or if you're just bored and you haven't got a piece of wood by, by you, grab a pencil that's sitting there. Um, thanks very much for watching. Uh, if you've got any uh, experiences or any thoughts, please do uh, pop them on the comments page. I know it's very helpful for other people as well to see uh, how everyone else is getting along. Uh, please hit the like and subscribe buttons and uh, I'll catch you for the next video. Cheers. Bye-bye.